Hey and welcome. I am going to migrate hosted email from a web hosting uh, client that I have at SiteGround, flowcoaching.com. And to migrate that email to a hosted email system at Rackspace that I'm setting up for that domain name. And so, as you might remember, we're migrating flowcoaching.com over to uh, grid pane hosting from SiteGround, but we don't want to mess up the email system. And so I've taken control of the DNS. And by doing that, I'm able to move the website separately from the email and then move the email at my leisure, make sure that it's all working in the background. I'm Greg Davis, and this is Leverage WordPress. And uh, welcome to this tutorial on email migration. To get started, take a look at the screen here. As you might have remembered, this is the new Flow Coaching website. Uh, and uh, this is hosted at Gridpane at a staging subdomain. If you look up here, it's staging.flowcoaching.com. I have all the original pages up here, and I'm in the process of changing over to the Divi theme and redesigning all these pages here in the drop down for Chris's website. Now, while this is hosted at Gridpane here, um, the original site is still hosted at SiteGround. This is what the home page looks like. And um, the way that I've been able to do that is to take control of the DNS settings by using my free version of Cloudflare, where I point the name servers from the domain host, which is GoDaddy. Chris has an account at GoDaddy. Point it over to Cloudflare and manage the DNS settings in Cloudflare. What that means is that I can take these and leave these MX records over to these records, which points to the SiteGround email system that's in place right now. And I can also leave the A record for flowcoaching.com at this 35.208 IP address. That's the original SiteGround website. However, I made this staging subdomain A record, which points to a different IP you can see here, 209.50. That one's over at Gridpane. So if we look at SiteGround, uh, under this account, flowcoaching.com, under email, I don't have any email forwarding going on, but I have two email accounts to move. One is his main email, Chris, at flowcoaching.com, has 433 megabytes, uh, an unlimited quota. And this info at that he uses a little bit as a reply address for email communications has zero megabytes in it, but we're going to migrate this one as well. And with this email system, um, I've just looked into where I'm going to move the emails. Now, I host email for client sites at Rackspace email or Rackspace office, uh, which means that I set up domain names to host business email. And then for $2.99 a month per email address for 25 gigs, you can set up mailboxes as well as alias addresses that don't count towards your quota at all in Rackspace. But this is similar to something like Google Workspace, uh, which is $5 a month per email address for 30 gigs. Uh, and there's other services out there that do this. I do prefer Rackspace. Um, and just hosting email at a separate place from your website is a best practice because they maintain these IP addresses for outgoing email and make sure that they are uh, have a good reputation for email sending. And so deliverability is on point. And so I've logged into my Rackspace account here, and I know that I have to add Chris's domain name and create an empty email address for those two email addresses first. And so first, I'm just going to, you know, what I do is I went down here and added, went to domains and clicked add new domain. And I'm going to add this domain. I own the, uh, the domain because I have control of it. And I'm going to do a standard 25, 600 megabyte mailbox size, basic email and just click save. So now I'm starting with this email address at, at, at this domain now. I have zero mailboxes at the domain, but I do have the domain set up at Rackspace. And so I'll now go and, okay, I've clicked that domain name. Now what I want to do is set up Rackspace email. So I click Rackspace email up here. And under this domain name, there aren't any mailboxes, so I'll create one. And this is where I would start to incur my charges. And so I am going to set this up and start filling it with email today. I'm going to mi migrate all of Chris's email over there. And so I'm just going to put in the relevant information. The only thing required is the 
email address and then I'll do a password. Let's pause the video quick while I put that in. I don't need this to be visible in the Rackspace email company directory, but I can add mailbox. Oh, password doesn't meet requirements. So let's select a new one. Pause for a second. I just used a password generator from Dashlane. It's an easy browser, uh, browser password generator. Makes it easy, so let's add that mailbox. And I did save this password in a document off to the side here because we'll need that password to be able to set up Chris's email on his device once it's moved the hosting from one place to another. Okay, so that email address should be available in a few minutes. Let's add another email box. Um, in fact, I'm not even going to add this other email as an email box. I don't think there's very many emails in there. In fact, if you look at the email addresses here, it says zero megabytes. Um, out of the 250 quota. So I might set that up in order not to incur the extra expense of the email address. I'm just going to set up forwarding of this address over to the other one. If needed, I can go in here and manually forward all these emails into this box to, if he wants to keep them. But let's transfer this into a single email address into two. And so what I'll do down here over at Rackspace is instead of setting up a new email address, I'll set up an alias at Flow Coaching. So if I add info at oops info at flowcoaching.com, I'll have it be an alias of this email, and that's just like email forwarding. Basically, if an address if an email comes into info at, it will automatically appear as an email to Chris at. Okay, so what's next? If I look over here. Um, I looked at email migration services under Rackspace, and um, here's where I got to where I am so far. There's, there's two email migration services offered by Rackspace support, both free of charge unless you need a lot of extra help, but this external migration service and internal migration services. Uh, really, I'm using an external migration service, and I'm going to be using the self-migration tool. It's just a single really two email addresses merging into one, and I don't need assisted migration. This would be for companies that need help consulting, planning, and scheduling a migration. Like if there were lots of different people using email addresses at the company's domain and you're moving all of them over, um, we're going to address this even for the single email address, but with the self-migration tool, I'll be able to migrate everything over while Chris's email is still open and working. And then... Uh, just before we, we move the DNS over or just after, we'll do an additional migration process which will pull the any remaining emails that came in so none are missed. And so I've from here I've clicked the uh, migrate your email using self-service migration tool. And then there's this instruction document here, which is pretty straightforward. Basically, the first thing you want to do is what I've just showed you here, create the mailboxes. And so I created a mailbox that I'm going to migrate the major mailbox into first. And uh, so, uh, don't, uh, a, a good warning here, don't cancel the source mail service until you've confirmed with all the users that they have their email data. And so I'll be doing that with Chris and, and confirming that he does have that. So let's see what else I need here. Um, addresses, usernames, and passwords for the source and the destination mail servers. I believe I have all that information. That I need basically I need to be able to log in on both sides the source and the destination from SiteGround over to Rackspace so make sure you can update the DNS records at your DNS host and you know that I have that available here in Cloudflare and so review the list of items migrated I only need email honestly 70% yeah the size is going to be a non-issue Refrain from changing their passwords. Yeah, my client's not going to change his password. Um, you can export data into a PS fi PST file to, to have a local backup, uh, but I'm not going to do that. I don't think we need to do that. Um, for more information, prepare these. I don't need any of that, I think. So I think what I'll do is migrate email. So it says log in. Go to domains, click email migrations, um, and go 
or I can go directly from here to self-service migration tool. So domains and at the bottom of the screen, email migrations. So that means here under domains, I might be able to look down at the bottom, type of service mail, is it down here? There it is, migrations. Uh, IMAP to Rackspace email is what I'm doing. And da, da, da. Let's get started with the migration whiz. IMAP to, that sounds right. So if I click start migration now, yeah, it's the self migration address here at the top. And so let's get this started. External migration portal. Okay, this looks right. This is communication about this migration. Okay. All right, I filled out my personal email address there and they've sent me a secure login link. And I'm doing that here. I've received an email from them. It says, you're minutes away from migrating. Begin to begin, click on the following link. All right, so that's opening this tab inside the browser that you can see here. And this looks like some of the screenshots I saw in that document. So this looks good. It's going to go specify servers, connect, uh, associate mailboxes, trial, test the configuration, review the migration, and then migrate the mailboxes finally and then complete. Okay. So let's locate the server information. And so this is an IMAP. And I need the server name and the port. So this is just like logging in, setting up, um, you know, your, your SiteGround email. So if I want to go, let's try and find not authentication. Um, let's see what I want. I want to find email accounts and I want to maybe go over here and do a setup. And I want to log in. I want to configure email. And let's go to manual settings. Here's where I'll find everything. And so there's a mail server. That's the incoming server name. And then what port are they using? The IMAP port, 993. The destination server is Rackspace email. I think that's all I need. Server name, server port. It's going to get my credentials now, I think. Sure, there's emails. I know there's no contacts and no calendars within this setup. Just email from SiteGround and over. So now specify mailboxes. Okay, this is where I would put in the different emails and where they're going to be going the login name and the password. Email, login name, password. Okay. So really that's gonna be the same. And that's also gonna be the, whoops, the login name. The destination email is the same destination login name is the same and now I need the two different passwords so I'll pause it and go find those okay went and found the original password from Chris's SiteGround email account that I had set up for him that's why I have the password on file and this is the new password I just created uh, using the password creator randomizer at the Dashlane website. This is the new destination email. So let's just migrate this one only. I'm not actually migrating that info. Click next to begin. They're now going to perform a trial. Okay. I don't think there's going to be any folder hierarchies to, to migrate or anything at all except email addresses within the email box. Now if Chris has created uh, some IMAP folders on there, maybe those are going to come across. And then that would maintain his setup. So I'll pause the video while this is doing it. I've noticed the message says, you don't have to remain on this page for the trial to complete. And after clicking next, 
Feel free to close your browser and check back later. I'll also receive an email notification after each mailbox completes. Okay, so I can just wait for an email uh, or come back and check this page to see about this trial. And I'm going to pause the video now and we'll be back. Okay, so that took about 45 minutes or a little more. The trial migration is complete. It says, uh, took a small sample of data from each source to destination mailbox. Verify this by logging into your destination mailbox. If you're satisfied with the results, click next to continue. Okay, so what I'll do is go over to my Rackspace account um, and just go to the mailbox and log in using the web settings. So this mailbox, uh, log in as and I'll just log in. So open up a new tab. It shows, okay, so there are some email addresses in there. Yeah, it looks like it did a small subset of 10 emails. Looks good to me, honestly. Great. So what's next? Over to Rackspace and click next to continue. It says ready for migration. Clicking next, ready to migrate. We recommend that you set up mail forwarding at this time for each mailbox being migrated. So any new incoming mail will be delivered to the new system. If you are migrating all the mailboxes, you may wish to change your MX records to the destination before continuing. Okay, so this means that the new mailbox is working right now. And so I should point the MX records for this domain over to the new mailbox first. That way we won't lose anything at all as soon as I click migrate. And of course we can do a second migration if we want to. And so let's see, you know what I need to do? MX records for cloud office email, that's exactly what I'm doing. Configure DNS to send and receive email in cloud office. Yep. Select in the following table. Okay, so I'm replacing the Cloudflare MX records right here, which go to SiteGround with the new one. So what I'll do is create these new MX records and then delete the old. So let's see, where did I have that? Right over here. MX destination priority 10 and then priority 20 so this is the one thing I want to do quickly I just copied that destination I'm gonna add an MX record for at for the root there I think I'll leave TTL at auto and that's gonna be a 10 priority and now add one more MX record at, and this one, oops, this one's going to be mx2.emailserver.com. Uh, that's going to be needed here in Cloudflare. So that's priority 20. Let me make sure that's correct. Priority 20, yep. Save those, and, I, and let me just quickly do the other two. There's a text record and a CNAME record for verification. This is for authentication, an SPF record. So at text record, at, and then that's the destination. Okay. So add a text record, at for root, there's that. And then I'm also going to add a CNAME record. I believe that's also to root. No, it's called auto discover. And it's called auto discover .email server com. Okay, now I should go here and delete these. Let 
Now this is going to push any new email to the new server right away. Okay, great, there we go. And now that I have that MX records over, there's no forwarding necessary. So it's the same email address. Let's hit next. All right, we're now ready to initiate a full migration. Each mailbox, oh, it's only one, so depending on the size, it may take a few hours to a day. That, that small migration took 45 minutes, so we'll see. I'll stop the video here and we'll see how long this takes. 12.36 p.m., so we're starting. There it goes. Depending on the size of the mailbox, it may take anywhere from a few hours to a day. And I'll probably get an email again. All right, so stopping the video here. Okay, so that took a lot less time than the trial test configuration did. I guess the system did a lot of tests on it. So that only took oh, maybe half an hour or less. Uh, it says migration is complete. You may verify the contents by logging into your destination mailbox. And so once again, I could come over here <clears throat> and refresh. Those are unread, but I have 18 pages <clears throat> of emails with however many are on here, 20, <clears throat> something like that. This is where I maybe want to compare with the client's experience in the old email box. <clears throat> now I could go over here actually uh, and log in as the client here. If I log into webmail, <clears throat> yes, that gives me access to the webmail. So so I have the most recent email. That one. This is more inclusive. <clears throat> Oops. And then, let's see. Well, same kind of system. 18 pages. Now Chris just needs to change his email programs over to point to this Rackspace email box instead of <clears throat> the other ones. And so I'll get the settings right here and be able to tell that to Chris so that he can test the new email box. Awesome. So there's an email configuration helper tool that Rackspace has. This is where I found the credentials that I needed to give to the client to change in his email program. He uses Mac Mail on his Mac computer by Apple and also his iOS devices. So I clicked here under this, under, you know, on Rackspace, under this email address, I clicked Setup Help, Open Client Config Tool, which had me log in to a support center here with my Rackspace credentials. And so this gave me a generalized inbound and outbound um, uh, secure IMAP uh, port and an address for the email server for incoming and outgoing. Then you just have to use, uh, you know, your email address as the login name and the password that we created here. So I've delivered that to the client. I know the email is working and uh, we've got the DNS over here set up. The MX records are going over to the correct place, and so everything seems to be running fine. What I can do is send a test email, and I'll just finish by doing that. So what I did was I sent a test email from my own email program, and it looks like that it has been received, and so that's working. I could even reply and make sure that outgoing email is going out. Send that and uh, make sure all is working. I just saw it pop up over here. So email system's working. Chris just needs to change <coughs> his credentials inside of his email programs and we're all set. And uh, then we can continue revising the site and